Good morning, Church of the Living God, and those of you who are not, hello, hi. Um, please get your authorized version of the scriptures, uh, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse, by the, uh, in the things that we are going to be looking at today, okay? Don't get a Bible. Get the scriptures. Distinction, 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 okay? Uh, before we go any further, I am going to be using two words uh, primarily throughout this video. Poison crown. Here's what I want you to do. Pause this video, stop this video right now, and go and do this. Okay? You see that? No confusion about what I'm speaking about. Okay? You got that? Now, I want to talk to you about something. We are going to, we are going to take a kind of a look into Psalm 91. X-C-I. <laughs> Psalm 91. Um, you know, I know somewhere on the channel here, there is a video where you and I have discussed things in Psalm 91 before. I, I know it. Could I tell you which one? No. Can I find it for you right now even if I tried? No, I, I can't. I don't know where <laughs> I don't know where it is. Uh, praise praise be to God. The Lord has given me quite a few and I'm in, I'm at the point now where people will ask ask me questions. It's like, I've, oh, the Lord had me to do something on that. It's like, okay, do you have a link for it? No, I don't. Uh, I know I did. I know the Lord had me to do a video on it before. But uh, can I tell you which one? No. So, beg your pardon. Let's establish something. There ain't nothing happens without God's knowledge, without God allowing or doing, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 32 in your authorized version of the scriptures. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse in the scriptures, okay? Don't just sit there, hot shot. Come on, follow me along. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 39 on to verse 42. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. No one can deliver out of the Lord's hand. If he says so, it's going to happen. If he says against it, it ain't going to happen. Okay? You'll read in, in 1 Kings chapter 22, where a lying spirit came up, uh, uh, came before the Lord when uh, the Lord was inquiring, uh, who will persuade Ahab that he may fall? A lying uh, a spirit uh, came up for him, a lying spirit. It's like, I'll do it. And the Lord's like, okay, go ahead. 
you will proceed and prevail against Ahab. So the Lord allowed a lying spirit to go to be in the prophets of King Ahab, okay? Hence, the Lord allowed it, the Lord did it, okay? He allowed it. He himself did not do it, but he allowed it to happen, okay? There ain't nothing going to happen without the Lord allowing it, okay? Keep that in mind when in regards to sin, dear friend. Keep that in mind when so many of you are sick right now. Our dear, dear beloved, two, uh, uh, two of our dearly beloved brothers, our dear friends, are sick right now at the very moment. Sick right now. They are exhibiting all these, the multitude, the myriad of symptoms that the Jesuit-controlled media is telling you is the poison crown. But, okay, if the poison crown isn't a legitimate thing, then what are these people, what are these people getting sick from? What are, what is it? You know what I think, which I have always said from the very beginning? It's a biological weapon. Okay? It's a biological weapon that the Jesuits have released. Okay? This whole thing, this whole thing, the poison crown, you, you saw, okay? The whole poison crown thing, just like the, just like AIDS. God allowed AIDS to come to pass. God allowed it. I do not for one second, one millisecond believe God created AIDS. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. He allowed it to happen. Because what did AIDS first do? It went after the sodomites. Did it not? Uh, when the poison crown first was released by the Jesuit order, what did it target? Elderly and retarded people? People who have uh, pre-existing conditions? Okay? Okay. How do you explain the people who are being getting sick, who are dying? How do you explain that kind of stuff? It's a biological weapon that was created by the Jesuit order, okay? To instill fear, to bring about compliance onto their mandates and dictates, okay? You, you see people uh -huh, with their toaster on their face, okay? They're complying to that because of fear of a biological weapon that the Jesuit order released on this earth a couple of years ago. Now, okay, what was it, like 1990, uh, 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 2019, right? Mm -hmm. It's a biological weapon. It's man-made. And, you know, there's a patent out there for the poison crown, which I used to have on the channel. I still have access to it. Uh, if any of you are curious, there is still, you can still find it, that there is a patent for it. Some like to argue, well, that's disinformation, and, and maybe you're right, uh, you know, maybe. But nonetheless, people out there who are getting sick from this thing that the, the Jesuit-controlled media is calling the poison crown, hmm? it's not God-made. God allowed. It's not God made. It's man made. It's man made. It's man made. They have not isolated it. But yet, if it's man made, they would be able to come out of nowhere and say, hey, here it is. We've isolated it. Hmm. Why haven't they done that? Beats me. Beats me. Because if they suddenly isolated it, someone out there could probably realize it's like, hey, this is not something that occurs out in nature by natural means, meaning that God did it. Uh, no, this is synthetic. See, I believe if they released it that they said that they isolated it, that someone would have the sense enough to figure out, it's like, hey, wait, this is synthetic, not real. I've known people who have gotten 
who have what the Jesuit-controlled media is calling the poison crown. Okay? Even right now. Okay? It's just, and you got to remember, brethren, people, that the use of euphemism. For example, for example, okay? You take Webster's 1828 Dictionary and a more modern dictionary, lay them side by side. Do this. I've done it myself. Pick a, pick a letter. Okay? Pick a letter. And then compare, compare definitions. It will astonish you. Okay? And what is a euphemism? Changing the, changing the name of a condition to change the condition. You know, that's the one thing that, that devil uh, George Carlin had right, who is burning in hell right now. <laughs> yes, he is. Okay? Euphemistic language, which is a tool of the Jesuits. Change the name of the condition. Hey, we change the condition. And where, where the poison crown, coronavirus, may indeed be a very natural thing in and of itself, what the Jesuit-controlled media is pushing upon you is something man-made that they created in a laboratory and put out amongst the populace. Can I prove that to you? Absolutely not. That is a theory of mine. And I'm sticking to it. I'm sticking to it. Because think about it. You have people out there who say that it doesn't exist. And you, in a way, they're right. Because God was not the maker of it. Of what is happening right now with the sickness that you might have right now. God was not the author of it. He allowed it, but he didn't create it. He let man create it. And who did it hit first? Like I said, elderly, retarded people, people who have a pre had pre-existing conditions, okay? Evolutionary in mindset, evolutionary in creation, okay? What people, uh, the, the, the all-seeing eye, okay? <laughs> the all-seeing eye, all right? It is a weapon that is designed to, to seek out what? Specific, I don't know. But here's the thing. People who come into contact with this, they have similar symptoms, right? But then again, differing symptoms, and if something was like the flu, the flu bug, something that you get naturally, you know, you get the cold, you get the flu, pneumonia or something like that, okay? Though you get pneumonia or the flu, you're going to have the same symptoms as Joe, as Jane, okay? You're going to have the same thing. With this... Yeah, you know what the common thing is? They all seem to lose their 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 smell and their taste. And when someone uh, nowadays you say, "Oh, I can't smell or taste anything," they're like, "Ah!" Oh! To send people into fear. It's like, "Oh, you can't smell or taste? Oh, Corona gonna get you." See, see. But yet, I know for certain, my son-in-law. His wife, his son, they had this, okay? They all couldn't smell or taste. That was the one thing. And it, hey, I'm going to get you. But uh, my son-in-law had totally different symptoms than his wife and his son and vice versa. They all had differing symptoms. But yet it was supposedly the same thing. But yet the, the one thing they had in common, they couldn't smell or they couldn't taste, but yet it affected my son-in-law differently, his wife differently, and Kean different, differently. They didn't, they had opposing symptoms. That's a bioweapon. That's something that isn't natural. Okay? That's something that isn't natural. What you are being told just what media is telling you. It's a, it's a, it's a plague of scriptural proportions. <laughs> Comply. Comply. And, 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 and remember, 
Okay, Let, let's go to Exodus. Uh, uh, Exodus now, chapter... Where, where are we going? Where are we going? Exodus chapter 7, okay? Come on. Exodus chapter 7. You know, uh, you think about these prosperity guys, okay, who said, Give me money and the Lord is going to bless you with a harvest. And a lot of people, unfortunately, do that. They go broke while you got these guys living on the hog, smiling while Joe Schmo over here is broke. Okay? Satan has been given rule over this earth for judgment. Okay? Luke chapter 4, he says unto Jesus, who is tempting his flesh... Okay, not God himself. God cannot be tempted with evil. It was the flesh of Jesus that was tempted, not God himself. Jesus is God, okay? But in the temptation, Satan was saying, All this has been given unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. So when Satan, through his lying signs and wonders, wants to deceive people, every once in a while he's going to be able to do something Pull the wool over someone's eyes is a qual. Perfect example. Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 on the verse. We've covered this before, but for you lost people out there, okay? For you lost people, this is for you, okay? Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 on the verse 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, when Pharaoh shall speak unto you, say, Sure miracle for you. Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. Okay? Now only God can take something that is dead and make it alive. Okay? In this context, you know. You, you hear, uh, we read in the book of Revelation about how Satan might uh, bring the, the, what is it, the image of the beast to life or something. Whether that's going to be a hologram or whatnot, I don't know. But in this context, okay, God was able to bring a, serp a rod and make it into a serpent. Something lasting, okay? Because check this out, okay? Check this out. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. So see, God took something that was dead and made it alive, okay? Only God could do that in reality and have it stick, okay? No pun intended with the rod there, okay? Have it lasting. Have, it will not come to naught. What he makes alive, it's going to be alive. What he kills, it's dead, okay? It's dead. But look at this. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt. The magicians of Egypt. Instruction and righteousness. Egypt is likened unto a type of the world. Pharaoh, especially this Pharaoh, is likened unto a type of who? Lucifer. Satan, okay? The little G-God of this world, okay? Now the magicians of Egypt, the magicians of the world, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. They became serpents too. So the magicians of the world were able to also take something seemingly that was dead, right? And psh, there it is, it's alive. But look what happens. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. So that which is false will be swallowed up by the true. See. See, only God can bring something dead truly to life. The devil can make you believe, can fool you through lying signs and wonders. Okay? can make you think that he's bringing something that is dead to life, but what comes of the Lord will ultimately swallow up the fake. You see? So, hence, only God can truly bring something that is dead back to life. 
or make something that is not alive alive. Okay, you see? See what I'm saying? Let's continue. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh's heart was already hardened in the first place, okay? Okay, we have to remember that. God just continued it, okay? It was already there, okay? Pharaoh's hardened heart was already there. God knew that there was ain't no way anything. You read the whole account of Pharaoh, of what God did unto the Egyptians, okay? There was no way, even in all of that, Pharaoh was ever going to have his heart changed by the Lord. God knew that. Because his heart was already hardened before he told uh, uh, spake unto Moses about how I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Because Pharaoh's heart was already hardened, see. Okay, let's continue. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, which was already hardened to begin with. God's like, made sure of it though. It's like, okay, you, you've already made... See, Pharaoh had already made his choice. And when someone does not receive a love of the truth, God shall send them strong delusion that they might believe a lie that they might be damned who did not receive a love of the truth you see you see yeah are you getting that okay that's in um second thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 on to verse 12 go check that out okay but and he hardened pharaoh's heart that he hearkened not unto them as the lord had said as the Lord had said, is that, is that as far as we're going to read? Oh, no, we're reading on, uh, that, that was <laughs> verse 13, beg your pardon, okay? But now let's look at verses 19 on to verse 23 in the same chapter, okay? Again, the magicians of Egypt, the magicians of the world. Who are the magicians of the world? All the doctors in their lab coats making up all these, you know, the steel of the chiseled poniard, making, making diseases. Uh, you, you, you're, you're a fool who says in your heart there is no God. Uh, if you, you're a fool if you say man doesn't create diseases. Uh, look into how the Japanese were working with uh, radioactive fleas. How the Japanese and also the Germans were creating diseases, biological weapons for warfare. Remember... God said in the book of Genesis, when man gets together, they want to build towers, you know, ziggurats or whatever, to reach on the heaven and make themselves a name. And God said, if everybody comes together, this is what they do? Wow, now nothing will be uh, restrained from them. Okay, that came from God. See, when man puts their heads together, they want to make themselves towers. They want to be like gods. And isn't it a blasphemous and horrific thing to think that man, playing as God, making these biological weapons, these man-made diseases that they let loose on the populace for population control, if anything else which are always evolutionary in their mindset, okay? Now, God's plagues, absolutely. There are plagues within Scripture, absolutely. But this stuff nowadays, like cancer, cancer, man-made because of byproducts, okay? Um, GMOs and stuff like that, okay? And even beyond before all the GMOs and whatnot, okay? Other things of such nature, okay? See, man has brought about these things, and God has allowed it. But look at verses 19 on to verse 23 in Exodus chapter 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone, water to blood. Okay? 
And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded. And he lifted up his rod and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died and the river stank. If you've ever smelt dead fish before. And the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians of Egypt, the magicians of the world, you could say for our instruction and in righteousness, did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them. As the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither did he set his heart to this also. Remember that. Set his heart to do to this also. Because his heart was already hardened before. He had already made his choice. Remember, the Pharaohs thought they were gods. Okay? They did. They, they thought that they were our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? That's what they thought they were. One of, one of a pantheon unto the Egyptians. Okay? Just like the Pope wants you to believe that he's a God. A God. Okay? God is the vicar of Christ. <laughs> are there any other people out there who think that they are God? They are God himself? I wonder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Pharaoh's heart was already hardened. He believed a lie. He had no love of the truth. So God, in accordance with Scripture, okay, there you go. Let's continue. And all the Egyptians did round about the river for water to drink, for they could not drink of the water of the river. And seven days were fulfilled after that the Lord had smitten the river. Okay, and now Exodus chapter 8, verses 5 and 7. Okay, you're getting the point. Okay, the magicians of Egypt can copycat, mimic, counterfeit actual miracles done by the Lord. Yes, they can. They can make it look as if it is the real thing when it is something that they are doing themselves through their enchantments. Yeah, yeah. Exodus chapter 8, verses 5 on to verse 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause, cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. So see, again, again, the magicians of the land of Egypt, they were able to do the same thing. But it only came, went to a point Let's look now at verses 16 and 19. Verses 16 and 19 in Exodus chapter 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, dust of the land. Okay? That it may become lice through all the land of Egypt. So dust, dirt, turn it into lice. Okay? The magicians were able to take a rod, throw it down, and turn that into a serpent as well. But, as we had already looked at, Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. See, the true will always destroy the fake. Okay? And, again, only the Lord can make something that is dead, that is not alive, truly alive. Truly alive. Okay. Verse 17. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth 
and it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. So dirt, because remember, you and I, we were made from dust. So it's, is anything too hard for the Lord? If he made you and I from the dust, okay, dirt, he made lice from dust. Okay, you get it? Verse 18. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice. But they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. And then finally, verse 19. Then the magicians said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. It was the genuine article. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Because again, his heart was already hardened. Okay? There's only so far that these devils can go. All right? They are the ones, and see, with their biological weapon which they have released upon the populace, okay? It starts out, if someone, if they can't smell or taste, oh, oh, stay away from me, okay? To incite fear. Oh, you better go, go, you know, get the steel of the Jesuit punyard, you know, put a tongue from on your face. Stay back, stay back, okay? Everybody seems to have that who comes into contact with this. Okay? But all the symptoms are different afterwards. Very strange. See, the enchantments with their enchantments, their laboratories, the magicians of Egypt trying to mimic something that God has made. For example, the flu is a natural occurrence, something God made. Yes. Why? Don't know. That's just the way it is. Okay. God has plagues, you know, in the scriptures. Yes. Do remember this, dear brethren. And I will bring this up again in a little while. The great prophet Elisha, not Elijah, Elisha. How did Elisha go home to be with the Lord? He died of sickness. The great prophet Elisha died of a sickness. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So see, the magicians of Egypt can mimic what God really does. But see, the true will always envelop the false and overtake them and swallow them up. You know the mark of the beast? No man might buy or sell save he who had the mark of the beast and the number of his name in his right hand or in his forehead, you know, the mark of the beast, right? Okay. Think about this. In the book of Revelation, it's talking about how they get sores and boils and stuff like that because of thing, because they got the mark of the beast. They put something into the body that wasn't supposed to be in the body. Okay. Think about all these people who have taken the steel of the Jesuit poniard with uh, the VMAT2 inhibitor that affects the pineal gland, okay? Think about what kind of disease will come upon you that is real, that is real, that will envelop the fake that most of you, unfortunately, have fallen for. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. See, when they come in contact with something that is true, the real envelops the false and gets rid of it. Isn't that interesting? But now let's go to Psalm 91. Okay? See, all these things are out there to cause fear upon you. In order, in that fear, to cause you to have compliance unto man. The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Psalm 91. Verse two, we begin at verse 2 and we will be reading on to verse 12. 
I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. In Him will I trust. Psalm 118. Follow me along. Come on. Psalm 118. Like I said, I know somewhere on the channel here, we've gone through this before. I know that. I, I can't find it. So we're going through it again. Okay? If you find it, point it out to me and thank you. Okay? But Psalm 118 verses 4 on to verse 6. Okay? Uh, so, uh, Psalm 91 verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, not man or the institutes of man. He, the Lord, is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Psalm 118 verses 4 on to verse 6. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. Hello, hi, yes, his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man, the Jesuits, do unto me. The Lord can kill you. And once they kill you, they're going to go after your family. That's the way they are. Because the Jesuits never forgive nor forsake. And remember, Jesuits are Christians. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Second Timothy. See, the fear of man bringeth a snare. The fear of the Lord is clean. It's pure. Fear of the Lord is right. And because we fear the Lord, we do not fear man. Okay? And because we do not fear man, but fear the Lord, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Come on, we all know this. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. See, see, the Jesuits with their biological weapon that they have created put out there and put a stamp on it. Corona going to get you. And they've made it. Not our Lord. The Lord has allowed it. Absolutely. The Lord has allowed it to happen. If he did, if God didn't allow anything like that to happen, it wouldn't have happened. Okay? Yeah, you comprende, right? See? See? Okay? Because we read that in Deuteronomy. God is in control. Nothing happens without his say-so, okay? You read the book of Job, okay? All right? And also you look in 1 Kings chapter 22, okay? Nothing happens outside of God's knowledge and say-so, all right? You, you, you with me on that, okay? Because we fear the Lord and not man, okay? For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But see. They've created this to coerce you into fear that you will comply, making you ready to, and willing to accept and bow down to that man of sin, the son of perdition, after we, the church of the living God, are redeemed, resurrected. Okay? Because, you know, you got to remember the ultimate question. It's like, okay, if these people ain't dying from Corona gonna get you, the poison crown, then where are they dying from? All the while, you got the Jesuit-controlled media saying, Corona gonna get you. Corona gonna get you. Corona gonna get you. The all-seeing eye. Huh? If that isn't, if it isn't what they're saying it is, what is it? It's a biological weapon that they have created, which God has allowed. Again, can I prove that? No, I can't. No, I can't. No, I can't. But I'm gonna stick to that. I'm going to stick to that. And we'll find out in the end whether or not it is or isn't. I don't think this was made by God. God allowed, yes. But of his doing made it? No, I don't think so. Just like AIDS. Just like AIDS. Many like to, again, like to bring in about Romans, how they received the, that recompense of their error that was meat. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. 
But there again, I don't believe God made that either. Man made AIDS, just like man created this and is pumping it to you on the Jesuit controlled media. Okay? But because we fear the Lord, we fear not this stuff. Unlike those of you who are not saved. You go to Psalm 53. Psalm 53. Okay? Psalm 53. Psalm 91, verse 2. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Psalm 53. Psalm 53. Come on, fingers work with me. But see, the, the fear of man bringeth a snare. But whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. See, you fear man. You fear what man has created. Okay? Psalm 53. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. There's your definition of a fool. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them is gone back. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And that includes you, and that includes me. Okay? Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Who eat up my people as they eat bread? They have not called upon God. Verse 5. There were they in great fear, where no fear was. If you fear God, why fear men? And see, those of you who fear what the Jesuits have created, you don't fear God, you fear men. So, even, okay, even if you come in contact with this biological weapon, you are the church of the living God, guess what? If it kills you, absent from the body, present with the Lord. The hard part will be for us, the survivors, who will have to deal with the loss of you. And that's the hard part. But see, that's a catch-22. We are selfish. Let's be honest, brethren. We are selfish in the fact that we miss that individual because they are not here for our gratification. But on their part, they're with our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and please, don't, don't get offended by that. That's just the truth. Okay? Yes, we want that lost loved one to be here with us right now because we want them. But if they're, if they're, <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, they're up there, it's like, hey, I, I love you. You know, God is with you. He, you know, he'll comfort you. But I, I'm, I'm, t I'm with Jesus. Okay? Okay? There were they in great fear where no fear was. God has not given us the spirit of fear. You needn't be afraid of this biological weapon. You needn't be afraid of what's coming. Unless you're lost. Unless you're lost. What are you afraid of? If you're lost, yeah, you have every reason to be afraid. Because when you die, guess what? You're going to hell. <laughs> That's not funny. But you're going to go to hell. You have everything to fear if you're not saved. Everything to fear. There were they in great fear where no fear was. For God has scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame because God hath despised them. You reject the gospel. You reject true salvation, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, coming to him on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, having godly sorrow, and in fear of the Lord you call upon his name and may he save you. You reject that, you're going to be scattered. You're going to be fearing men. And verse 6, 
tells you the dispensation which this is written for. Oh, that salvation, oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. Reference, the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. When God bringeth back the captivity of his people, and all Israel eventually shall be saved, Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Okay? Verse 3 in Psalm 91. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome, noisome pestilence. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 23 on to verse 26. Okay. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Verse 23 on to verse 26 in 2 Timothy chapter 2. But foolish, foolish, fool, we just saw, fool has said in his heart there is no God. To be foolish is what? To behave as if there is no God, okay? But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto some men, all men. Even the one that's, yeah, yeah, easier said than done, okay? And the servant of the Lord must not, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, because your heart is hardened, because you receive not the love of the truth. Therefore, God is sending you. You want to lie? He's going to give it to you. You're opposing yourself. Okay? In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them belief, excuse me, repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare. Snare. A circular thing, kind of like a noose on the ground. Something puts its leg in there, a foot in there, and it trips a lever, and it takes them in. Whoa! Okay? And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, now, the snare of a fowler is someone who is catching something, but the tie-in here. Who snares men? Who is snaring men right now? Through the Jesuit, through the Jesuit order, through his church, Satan's church, Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, okay? Who's snaring men right now? Satan is, okay? And they, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Because whomever he will, he give it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And go to Ezekiel. Noyasam. Noyasam. Go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14. Like, like I said, I know we've talked about this before. I know we have. I just can't tell you where <laughs> and in what video. Okay? I can't. So, bear with me. Okay? But Ezekiel chapter 14. We want verses 15 on to verse 21. Okay? 15 on to verse 21 in Ezekiel chapter 14. If I cause noisome beasts, beasts, hmm, to pass through the land, and they spoil it, so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through because of the beasts. Paul talks about how he, uh, what was it, how he wrestled with beasts at Ephesus. And here the Lord said, says, if I cause noisome beasts, beasts to pass through the land. Hold your place here and go to Second Peter. You probably knew where we were going with that, didn't you? Good, good, praise the Lord, you should. You should. Second Peter chapter 2. 
2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Let's read verse 15 again. If I cause noisome beasts, noisome, making a lot of noise. Boy, they sure make a lot of noise about all this Poison Crown stuff, ain't they? Well, not right now because they want it to go uh, low for a little while. Then something's you watch, something's going to happen, and then you watch, you watch. Why do you think there are people out there trying to get prepared for what's coming in great extremity? Think about it. Okay? 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 17. But these as natural, unregenerate, earthly, sensual, devilish. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. Who made them? Well, God made everything. Yes, they did. Yes, he did. But... These, made to be taken and destroyed, they made up their minds. They received not the love of the truth. They have made their choice. So God will give them what they want. So who in fact made them? Themselves. Why? Made to be taken and destroyed, right here. Speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own destruction. And of course, verse 10 uh, talks about how they speak evil of dignities and despise self-government. Okay? But these as natural beasts, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. While they feast with you, while they are amongst us. Hmm, interesting. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children. Like one of the uh, unstable. When you talk to someone who has lost a loved one. While well, of the Church of the Living God, they're not unstable in themselves and they're secure, but... When someone has lost a loved one, the emotions, the whirlwinds of things that can go on in a man or a woman's head or heart, you know. But beguiling unstable souls. Unstable, don't know what to think. Not on solid ground yet. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. This tells us what? That these people who are these uh, brute beasts, they have a form of religiosity onto them. When you think of re religiosity, what do you think of? You think of churchianity, Christianity, right? You need faith in order to make all this stuff work. A People out there are getting sick. Yes. People have died. Yes. I know of several right now who are sick right now. Okay? From coming in contact with a biological man-made weapon. Not something that the Lord has made. Very big difference. Very, very, very big difference. Okay? Very, very big difference. But, okay? So, these people, they have a form of religiosity. They have a form of, oh, being ministers of righteousness. Like all the doctors are. Like these laboratory lab rat guys who came up with this stuff. 
like the Christians in the church buildings. They're so righteous. The Christians here on YouTube and other platforms, they're so righteous. They're so righteous. Ministers of righteousness. Yeah. Do remember, brethren, people, when it comes to religiosity, it is not confined to the areas of what is termed Christianity. To keep that in mind. Okay? So these people are going to have a form of religiosity. The poison crown psychological operation is religion. It's a religion that's ran like a cult. It's ran like a cult, dear brethren. It's ran like a cult. And who's the head of this cult? Oh, that'd be Satan. Through his man right now today, the black pope, Arturo Sosa. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, verse 16, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water. Clouds that are carried with the tempest. To whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Verse 18. For while they speak great swelling words of vanity. Oh, and look at Fauci. Look at some of these, uh, these news people. Oh, oh, great swelling words of vanity. They allure through the lusts of the flesh. The fair man bringeth the snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Okay. Through much wantonness. Those that were clean. Escape from them who live in error. Back to Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 16. Though these three men were in it, what three men are those? Noah, Daniel, and Job. We will read that in a little bit. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Are we at that bad of a time right now? We're getting really close. <laughs> yeah. Or if I bring a sword upon the land, that land, and say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. And we are at a point right now in time where people are that bad. These are the days of Noah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay? All right, where did we leave off? Okay? Verse 19. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast. If I do it, if he allows it, or if he does it naturally, by something he derives, or allows the Jesuits to bring out a biological weapon upon the populace for a means of judgment. Though Noah, Daniel, oh, here, wait, or if I send a pestilence into that, into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. Third time he says this, they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousnesses. By their righteousness, excuse me. And our righteousness is not ours. It's the Lord who dwells within us. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, I can think of three beloved brethren, friends of mine, our brethren, right now. One out in the Northeast, a brother of our brother, okay? Um, our brother from Croatia and another brother from Australia, okay? Though these three men were in it, 
As I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Why? Because God has not given us the spirit of fear. They might come, you might come in contact with this biological weapon. Or it might be something natural. I more reckon it's you've come into contact with something that the Jesuits have created. Okay? Okay? Verse 21. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sword judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast? Again, what's been what's out there right now, I do not believe for one second that it is God made. It is God allowed. There is a difference. There is a big difference. Okay? Huge difference. Okay? Absolutely there is. Absolutely there is. Okay? Now, let's go to verse 4 in Psalm 91. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thy shield and thy buckler. Okay? And of course, in Matthew chapter 23, our Lord speaks of, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest all the prophets, and all I send unto thee. How I would have gathered thee under my wings as a chicken. Instead of me butchering that, let's go there. Okay. The point is, Christ would have all men, God would have all men to be saved. But not everybody's going to. Because why? There is a condition to him saving you. You have to come according to his conditions, not yours. Okay? God's salvation is there for everybody. Amen it is. But not everybody is going to come to him on his terms. Okay? But the point is here in uh, Matthew chapter 23, verses 37 and 38. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as an hen gathereth her chicken under her wings? And ye would not. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. See, God wants to gather everyone together unto him. But see, not everybody's going to come according to his desire, his will. You got Catholicism wanting to bring everybody together so that they may rule the, volition, the world by the volition of a single man, that man of sin, the son of perdition. And hence, they jettison truth that they might compromise and have unity. True unity is based on truth. And if you're not in truth, there will be no unity. Because if you're not in truth, what are else what else, what is the other thing that you are in? Oh flesh. Flesh just like they are. And because of such, behold, your house is left unto you desolate. See, here in verse 4, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Okay? But if you reject him, your house will be desolate. Okay? And John chapter 17, sanctify them, uh, John chapter 17, verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy... Word, the authorized version, is truth. Okay? And Psalm 119. Psalm 119. <laughs> My personal favorite in Psalm 119. Beth. Wherewithal, oh, Psalm 119, Beth, is 9 on verse 16. 
Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way, by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart. Still, have you figured out how to do that yet? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Absolutely. And of course, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 on to verse 16. Finally, my brethren, if you're not saved or born again in the church of the living God, this has nothing to do with you. Because you're covering yourselves for, with the coverings of Egypt. Woe be unto those who go to Egypt and cover themselves in the coverings of Egypt. And their strength is in horses and in men and not God. Okay? Your armor is an armor of flesh. We of the church of the living God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We need to remember that. Hi. Hi. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, like in the high places of the Vatican, of governments, which are all controlled by the Vatican, okay? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Like get down deep into you. Truth. Girt it about with truth. Okay, what is truth? Don't worry, we're going to look at that in John 14. Don't worry. But we're going to use look at that in a different part, okay? So don't worry about that. I've forgotten that, okay? Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. That's where it begins with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness that covers your heart, okay? That covers your heart. The, blood, the breastplate of righteousness. Remember the breastplate that covers your heart. It'll come into play later, okay? And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Be instant in season, out of season. Be ready. Because you never know when the Lord is going to orchestrate something and he wants to use you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Verse 17. I put down 16. Verse 17, of course. And take the helmet of salvation, knowing that you are saved, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy and buckler. Verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. We've already, we've already touched on a lot of this, okay? Nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold, and see the reward of the wicked. Okay? We will see the reward of the wicked, whether it's down here or up there with our Lord Jesus Christ, getting ringside seats for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Verse 9. 
Why is all this? Why from verse 5 on to verse 8 is that there? Why is that? Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Verse, verse Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. See, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Okay? Okay? We of the church of the living God, we have nothing to fear of what the Jesuits are doing. We have nothing to fear whatsoever. Okay? You who are not saved but lost and are all about flesh, follow men, love men and the precepts of men, okay? You have a lot to be afraid of. Okay? And, and, and this is very telling, especially in these days where these people's hearts truly are. Okay? Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 on to verse 23. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. <laughs> <laughs> where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where's your treasure? If your treasure is down here, then your treasure isn't with our Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you say, oh, my, my, my treasure is with Jesus, but yet you're fixated on this. Granted, God knows what we have need of before we do. God knows what we need. Why, you, why do some of us have, feel the need to stoke the fires? I don't understand that. Where's your treasure? If you're running around in fear because of what the Jesuits are doing with this biological weapon and the psychological operation, um, <laughs> we know where your treasure is. Are you using this all as a, as, a, as a Ponzi kind of thing to better yourself? I remember when this first started, what was his name? Um, oh, I forget the guy who was selling all these. Oh, I can't remember who... Uh, I might be thinking of the wrong thing, too. But there were many people out there who were saying that uh, the baker, it's like he had the cure for all of this and was trying to get money off of that. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. If your eye be single, if your eye is focused on one thing and not divided, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Okay, if your eye is single, it's focused on one thing. Okay, all this other stuff might be happening. It's like you, you look at it, it's like no, no, no. I'm going to stay focused on who I've got to stay focused on. Okay, but if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness. How great is that darkness? How can light be darkness? Oh, well, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And no marvel if his ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. A light, the sun of the morning, that's so bright, it shines so bright into darkness. Hmm. And, that is, and that's something interesting to roll around in your head a little bit, huh? And go to John, first John, Excuse me. First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. We want verses 9 on to verse 
13. 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 13. Okay, uh, let's read the verse 9 again here in Psalm 91. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 on verse 13. And this was manifested the love of God toward us, those who are saved, who came to him on his terms, not your own. Okay? And this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent, past tense, his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. We, those who come to him on his terms, on his conditions. You don't come to the Lord any willy-nilly way you see fit. He has a prescribed way. Beware of these devils who, want, who are thieves and robbers who want you to go another way. And instead, they want to boot the door out of the way and go up their own way. Beware of these people, brethren. People. Watch out for them. They're all over. Huh. Okay? And this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, and we already kind of looked at that in Psalm 53, but that he loved, doesn't say loves, but that he loved us, past tense. God's love is Jesus Christ and him crucified, okay? And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, those who come to him on his terms, we ought also to love one another. And uh, If you didn't come to the Lord on his terms, but followed the prescribed way that a man taught you, and not the Lord through the scriptures himself, you're not my brother. You're not my brother. You're not my brother. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected, perfected in us. Hereby, helmet of salvation, Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us. Why? Because he hath given us of his capital S spirit. You are sealed unto the day of redemption. And when you come to him according to how he wants you to come to him, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name, he gives you his spirit himself. The Lord is that spirit that dwells within you, that seal until the day of redemption, putting on the helmet of salvation. Hereby know we. No. Hereby know we. Okay? And of course, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 8. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens, a glorified body that will not be corrupted. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that, being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, 
but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit, sealed unto the day of redemption. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Are you at home in the in your body? Oh, I just love myself. I'm gonna give my dad just in this. Oh, I just love my life. I will. Oh, everything is so. Eh. You don't want to be with Jesus. Wow, my life ain't too bad. Good for you. Bravo. Bravo. Up the dosage. Up the dosage. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Go right ahead. <laughs> Where did we leave, leave off? Okay. For we are, uh, verse, let's pick up at verse 4. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened. Not that we should be unclothed, but clothed upon. Uh, that mortality might be swallowed up in life. For let's read verse 3 and 4 again. Beg your pardon, okay? If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought, for, wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit, seal unto the day of redemption. Therefore we are always therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. Notice with all the TV and glamour and the glitz that the Jesuits through the media are pumping onto you. Showmanship, it's theater. It's the it's the suspension of disbelief. Suspension of disbelief. What is that? It's a theatrical term. Temporarily accept as believable events or characters that would ordinarily be seen as incredible. Hmm. And see, in order to make everything seem more incredible, unbelievable, it's like, wow, Satan will be allowed to bring certain things to pass to pull the wolves over the eyes of those who do not love God or who have not received the love of the truth. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. I don't know about you, but that's me. Verse 10. For there, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Now, literally, no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. But what happens? What happens to those of the church of the living God who come into contact with what, what they, the Jesuits, are calling the poison crown? The poison crown which they created, something that is not natural. So no plague will, but what happens if someone gets sick? Again, Elisha, the great prophet. Elisha, the great prophet of God, okay? He died of sickness. And Paul, I forget the guy's name, left somebody sick, okay? Um, and Miletus, I left him sick or something like that, okay? People of the church of the living God get sick. People of the church of the living God get sick and even die of sickness. But see, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. See, you and I of the church of the living God, we have nothing to fear in that, dear brother, dear sister. We have nothing to be afraid of, of what the Jesuits are doing. Okay? Okay? There is a biological weapon out there that they have put out. Okay? 
It's not all psychosomatic, okay? People are not acting. There are certain, I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. And now with the steel of the Jesuit Punyard, okay? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. The Jesuits have released this thing. They have made it. They have created it. Okay? It looks, uh, by certain symptoms, as if it might be something natural. But then again, it isn't. Okay? It isn't. Differing symptoms between people, not a standard line that happens to anyone who gets it. But the one thing that does, that may, that's there to put people in fear, loss of smell and taste. Hmm. And everything else could be different, okay? Similar things happen. But it's not all the same as if it would if someone got a flu, a certain strain of the flu. They all get the same thing. That's not the case with everybody who comes into contact with this biological weapon. Okay? It's not the case. It is not the case, is it? Is it? There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Here's the question. Remember, Elisha got sick. Paul left somebody sick, okay? People get sick, even of the church of the living God. Where? Where is your dwelling? <laughs> Where's your dwelling? Uh, uh, th yeah, this is where my body is dwelling. This is, this is what the Lord has given me and my wife to dwell in. Yes. This is not where I dwell. Where's your dwelling? Well, my dwelling's in Jesus. Is it? Why don't you act like it? Hmm. That's the thing, see, brethren? Where is your dwelling? See, right now, right now, this is where this is where me and my wife live. This is what the Lord has given us to keep us from the elements and whatnot and you know and and also too my wife with their cancer assists okay see those of the church of the living god get sick some will acquire sickness some will from uh the past of their lost life will have sickness come upon them because of their choices okay it happens but see where it says there shall no evil befall thee. Okay. There shall, if you're saved in the church of the living God, to be absent with the body is to be. We are confident, I say, and will we rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord? Okay. You die as the church of the living God, you're going to go and be with our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. Okay. <laughs> okay. So there's no evil going to touch you. Why are you afraid of man? The most that they can do is kill the body. There's no evil going to be uh, come uh, What does it say? There shall no evil befall thee. Oh yeah, the body might be destroyed. You might get sick, but there ain't no evil going to touch you, boy. You die, you're going to be with the Lord. Neither shall any plague, plague come nigh thy dwelling. Where is your dwelling? Oh, oh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I know we've gone over these quite a few times. We're going over them again. You need to be reminded. You need to be admonished. Okay? You need to be admonished. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 on to verse 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Hmm. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors to him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor 
angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hmm. And of course, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Hey, may, maybe the sickness is not unto death, but that the Lord may be glorified through it. Again, a brother of ours out northeast um, in a hospital bed is being used of the Lord as a witness unto the lost. The sickness might not be unto death. And if it is, it's going to be bad for us. But you, brother, sister, you're going to be with the Lord. And if the Spirit of Christ is not in you, you're none of His. If you're not saved, you have everything to be afraid of. Okay? And the plague. Okay? The plague. There shall no evil befall thee. Okay? If you're saved, born again, converted, or the church of the living God, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. They can kill the body. Okay, you you put a gun to my head, shoot me in the head, the body dies. My spirit and soul will go to be with the Lord. Okay, absolutely, that's how that works. So there is no evil going to befall me. You can put me through the ringer. You can cast out my name as dung. You can do whatever you want. There will no evil befall me. Why? Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. Where is your dwelling? Genesis chapter 12. The Lord has had me working on a, it's going to be a big video, which Lord willing, it'll be Monday. It'll be Monday, Lord willing. Um, the Lord is uh, having me to work on a video dealing with Genesis chapter 1, 1 through 5, the first day and we will talk about many things within that video not going to let the cats out of the bag so to speak but um, that's you know we're working on that so but Genesis chapter 12 verse 17 let's look at the first mention of the variation of the word plague beg your pardon for one second brethren all right not having that on my face my lips get more chapped right away <laughs> Genesis chapter 12. We're going to look at the first reference of any variation of the word plague. Note this. Note this. Verse 17 in Genesis chapter 12. You're looking at that? Isn't that interesting? And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Now we got to remember, this Pharaoh obviously was nothing like the Pharaoh in uh, Moses' time, okay? But nothing like it. But there again, you got to remember, Pharaohs in and of themselves, they thought they were gods, okay? They did. The Pharaoh, towards the end of Genesis... Okay, that worked with Joseph. He was a just, righteous king. He really was. Okay, he was a just ruler. Okay, he was nothing like the Pharaoh uh, that Moses dealt with, which you and I can liken onto the type of Satan. Okay, but all Pharaohs, they believed themselves to be a, be a god. Okay, regardless. Okay, and you read about this Pharaoh particularly, he did what was right. But yet, in his heart, he still believed he was a god. But yet, he was able to do what was right. Whereas the Pharaoh in Moses' time, 
<laughs> okay, that Pharaoh likened onto a type of Satan and his fourth. Okay, but I, I just think that's very interesting. And look at the uses of the word plague. The Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house, very interesting, with great plagues, plural, because of Sarai, Abram's wife, because of the wife of Abraham, of Abram, excuse me. And of course, you can tie into that how we are the bride of Christ. And, you know, if any man defile the temple of God, him will God destroy. That includes yourself, but that also includes them. See, brethren, you of the church of the living God, you come into contact with this biological weapon that they have made, that they are terming, terming the poison crown. Um, if any man defile the temple of God, him will God destroy. Okay, They're going to pay for that. Because you belong unto our Lord Jesus Christ. You are his bones and his flesh. Okay, part of his bones and his flesh. Okay, beg your pardon. But they're, they're going to get what's coming to them for doing that. Okay, they're going to get what's coming to them. And Abram, you know, Abraham's bosom. Okay, but Abram, because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Okay, Sarai, Abram's wife, Abram, type of Christ. Sarai, type of the bride of Christ, Pharaoh and his house is plagued. Okay, and keeping in mind in context, this Pharaoh wasn't a bad Pharaoh. Okay, but still, I found that very, 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 very interesting. And Genesis or Exodus chapter 9. Gen uh, Exodus chapter 9. And there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Where is thy dwelling? Hmm? Where are you dwelling? Where's your dwelling? Hmm? Is your dwelling in Christ? It ought to be. If your dwelling is truly in Christ, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. There shall no evil befall thee, even though they kill the body. And there shall no plague come nigh thy dwelling, if thy, thy dwelling is with Jesus Christ, what plague is going to get between what's going to get between you and Christ, huh? Exodus chapter 9, verses 13 and 14. Pay attention to this. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews. Let my people go that they may serve me. Now, of course, this Pharaoh and the Pharaoh since you liken unto Satan. Okay? Pharaoh is likened unto Satan. Egypt likened unto the world for our instruction and in righteousness. Okay? Verse 14. Look at that. Don't look at me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart. And upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. And right here, for I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart. Where is your heart dwelling? Where is your dwelling? Remember in the previous video? I myself, with my mind, will serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Where, are, where is your dwelling? Where is your dwelling? And the plague upon the heart that affected Pharaoh's servants and his people, his flesh, his things like Satan, it's like, Okay, all that a man hath, he will give for his life. Yea, skin for skin, yea. But touch his bone and his flesh, he will curse thee to thy face. And eventually, what happens with Pharaoh here? See, if you are dwelling, if your dwelling is hid with Christ Jesus, there's no plague going to come now. You're dwelling. Okay? 
Is there a literal interpretation to that? Yes. How do you reconcile then those of the Church of the Living God who have come in contact with this biological weapon that the Jesuits have released? Hmm? How, do you, how do you explain that? How do you reconcile, with, uh, reconcile it with this? To be absent with... Yeah, yay, we ourselves are killed all day long! Okay? Okay? Yeah, there is a literal application you can have there for instruction and in righteousness, but more deeply, more profoundly, where is your dwelling? Is your dwelling down here? Then it's going to affect your servants and your people. But if your dwelling is with the Lord Jesus... We walk by faith, not by sight. Do you get it? Now, verse 11 and 12. Satan quoted this to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. In all thy ways. First Peter, oh, 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 don't do that, don't do that. Uh, you know, brother, you know who you are. This, this set of scriptures that you gave me, I was, uh, this, uh, you've seen this video, you've seen this set of scriptures in numerous videos. Thank you. I, you, we've, I just want to just, again, say this was an amazing gift that you gave me. Thank you so much for it. You know who you are, okay? But anyway, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 on to verse 25. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin... Christ never sinned, okay? Christ could not sin because God cannot be tempted with evil, but the flesh could be tempted. I don't know why that's so hard for so many of you to get. I don't get it, but whatever, 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 okay? Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Verse 23, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Remember the Godhead is spirit, soul, and body. Okay? The Holy Ghost is the spirit. God the Father is the, the soul. The Word made flesh is the body. Okay? The Word made flesh. Okay? <laughs> okay? Spirit, soul, and body. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, okay? When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Shall provide himself a lamb. See, Satan's temptation in Luke chapter 4 was all aimed at what? Jesus was sent here for on a mission. He was here to do a mission. To what? To be that lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. To die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures. And to shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for sin. For your sin and my sin. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek to Gentile. Okay? He had a mission. But see, Satan's temptation, twisting this, taking it out of context, he's saying, hey, go ahead and cast yourself down. Because... See, it was a temptation of the flesh. Trying to get Christ to deviate from his mission that he was on. And then he said to uh, Satan, it's like, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It's like, what, 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 what are you doing? And see, God cannot be tempted with evil. And it would have been evil if Jesus decided to all of a sudden go, <laughs> and cast himself off. Okay? See, Satan's, all of his temptations were aimed right here at the flesh. See? 
Let's see. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Okay? Verse 24 in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And also too, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 6. Wherefore, seeing, and now this is for the Hebrews during the time of Jacob's trouble, but it's meet for what we are looking at. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience, though, because during the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to endure to the end to be saved. You don't have to endure to the end today to be saved of anything, okay? Let us run with patience the, the race that is before is that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Yes, yes, God manifest in flesh, okay? Perfect, sinless, could read minds, could read thoughts, knew what people were thinking. Oh, oh. The perfect, sinless God manifest in the flesh. You talk about humility, being humble. Wow. Wow. Verse 4. Ye have not yet resisted on the blood striving against sin. And of course, Catholics take that with the flagellation on whipping themselves and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Why are some of the church of the living God getting sick because of this? Because of what the Jesuits have done? I don't know. It happens. But remember, those who caused this to happen unto you, the Church of the Living God, His body, they're going to pay for it. They're going to pay for what they have done to this world. They're going to pay. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. And we also must, must remember this. Go to Job. Job chapter 13. Job chapter 13, verse 15. <laughs> For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Job chapter 13, verse 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain mine own ways before him. Not... Not that I, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. No. If you're in correction or in chastisement, you seek the Lord. It's like, okay, Lord, what's going wrong? Uh, what am I doing wrong? Okay. Or if something has happened to you without anything of your, you know, you just, you, you've come and, you know, you were at the store, or you're walking by or something like that. Okay. Maintain. Maintain your own ways. Continue to walk according to the scripture. Okay? For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. To keep thee in all thy ways. Thus far have we not seen already dependence again on Christ that he shall keep thee, that under his wings you are, and that he will protect thee and provide for thee. 
And it says here, to keep thee in all thy ways. John 14. Verses 5 on to verse 9. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. For if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. <laughs> Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. So, for he shall give his angels charge over thee. Hmm. To keep thee in all thy ways. Hmm. And what is the way? The Lord Jesus Christ. Now are angels directing us? No. No. No, but we have the scriptures and our Lord is often referred to as the angel of the Lord. Just saying, but to keep thee in all thy ways, the Lord will keep you in his way. He is the way. See, and verse 12 Verse 12, oh, and let's also saw, uh, Psalm 108. And remember too, Christ set his face, was steadfast to go to Jerusalem. His heart was fixed. Okay, is your heart fixed? Where Where is your dwelling, dear brother, dear sister? Where is your dwelling? Where is your dwelling? Psalm 108, very, just one verse. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise, even with my glory. Oh God, my heart is fixed. Is your heart fixed? Is your heart, is your dwelling with Jesus? Is your heart with him? Do you have a per perfect heart? Well, nobody can. A broken heart is a perfect heart. One that is broken of self-righteousness and knowing what scum you are, knowing that you can't save yourself and it has every dependence upon Christ Jesus. That's a perfect heart, boy. I can sit here all day and try to explain that to you, but if you ain't saved, you ain't going to get it. Unfortunately. But verse 12 They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Trip, fall up by someone trying to get you out of the way, by, take, by taking your attention away and watching the things that you ought not. Because if your dwelling is down here, or worse, to trying to divide it between the two, you're going to, every little Nook and cranny, you're gonna you're gonna fall over. Psalm 121. My wife, my wife helped me with this. She she my wife. It, praise the Lord, pra praise the Lord. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Mm. Mm. And this is a very meat way to finish this. Because it's it sums up what, again, we have been talking about. I will lift up mine eyes unto, unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is thy keeper. 
The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. You look at that. Look at, don't look at me. Come on, man. Look at that. He shall preserve thy soul. And, and uh, uh, verse 10, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. You know, don't be discouraged, brethren. Don't be discouraged. I truly, like I said, I truly believe, you know, and, and remember, you know, if, if you're right, if you have, for example, if you have a little sniffle, okay, or a, <coughs> a cough, or wh whatever, a runny nose, or sweaty buttocks, okay, and you get on your motorcycle, and you, for some reason you decide to park your car, your motorcycle underneath a Mack truck, okay, and they go and they look at you at your autopsy, okay, uh, your head might have been taken clean right off, but because you had the sniffle, they will say, hey, died due to complications from the poison crown. And that is documented that they have done that. Okay? And remember too, brethren, euphemistic language that the Jesuits have changed the meaning of words? Don't, don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. There, there is something out there. Absolutely there is. Absolutely there is. But it is not what the Jesuit-controlled media is telling you it is. They want you to believe that it's, the, it's, it's worse than any plague in all of Scripture. It's a man-made weapon that they have made to force people into compliance for when the church of the living God is redeemed, caught up, and you're left so that you will bow yourself to that man of sin, the son of perdition. That's what it's there for. That's what it's there for. Can I prove that? No. Can someone who has been educated from the Jesuits come in and tear this apart? Say, well, you're not educated. Yeah, you're right. I'm not educated like you. Yeah, I didn't learn anything from the Jesuits. Go pound a little sand there, buddy. Okay? Yeah. Or, I, I, you know, I'm a journalist. I know everything. Yeah, I'm sure you think you do. Yeah. Yeah. Here's where I stand. Here's where I stand. Brethren, rejoice. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. That is going to be it for this video. Um, like I told you, the Lord has, oh, wow, a video coming about Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, about the first day. We're going to encompass, uh, we're going to talk about several things within that video um, that's still being worked on. A lot of scripture going to be in that video. A lot of scripture. Lord willing, that will be the next video that will come. Um, it will probably, today is the, the 17th, which is a Thursday. It will probably be, Lord willing, <laughs> Kamala's Day. You know, President's Day on Monday. It will probably, Lord willing, come Monday. I don't know. It's up to him, not to me. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged, brethren. Don't be discouraged. Our time is coming to an end, okay? And these people, brethren, these people, these Jesuits, the people who created all this, they're going to get what they're going to get what's coming to them. They're going to get what's coming to them. They absolutely are. They absolutely are. 
I say, I still say to you that yes, the poison crown does not exist, but what exists is a biological weapon that they have termed the poison crown. But something that God made, no, it doesn't exist. But what was man made and God allowed, that's what you, that's what everybody's experiencing. This was not a natural occurrence. There's no way. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. I mean, look, research, biological warfare. Look at uh, what happened and uh, throughout history of these things. Okay. Th read up on the radioactive flea thing in Japan. That, that was creepy. That was creepy. Yeah. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I hope this helps you. I hope this, um, you know, like I said, you and I have the church of the living God. We have nothing to fear. But you who are lost, you've been lied to. This is not a natural thing. It is a man-made biological weapon. I hereby accuse Roman Catholicism and the Jesuit order of genocide. Of murder, of deceit. Up the dosage there, right? Anyway, thank you for those of you who pray for us. I know right now, presently, three of the Church of the Living God who are sick. And as far as I know, they, they've, they've come in contact with what the Jesuits have released. Not what they are telling you to believe, but what they have actually done, what they have created. What they have created. Not something natural. Not something natural at all. So brethren, please pray for those who are sick. Because they're dealing with something man-made, not God-made. So pray for the sick. Pray for the sick. Pray for each other. Pray for mercy. Pray as the Lord will have you to pray. We love you. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we'll see you in the next video.